Hey, welcome back to another episode of The Mortgage Musketeer. I am Sean Neely, and today we're going to be talking about one important thing. Stop paying cash for your rent. That's right, stop paying cash for your rent because your loan approval may very well depend upon it. Here's what's going on. It is July 20th of 2019, which is just a few days away, uh, Fannie Mae is going to tighten up the guidelines again. Now they do this all the time. They tighten them up, they loosen them up, it all depends on a lot of factors, but they have the ability to control how the automatic underwriting system reads your file. And if they're looking at inherent risk in the market where maybe foreclosures are up, they're gonna tighten up those, uh, uh, those lending guidelines. So when you run uh, uh, an approval, when a loan officer runs an approval through the automatic underwriting system, it may come back instead of being approve eligible, it will be something called refer eligible. You can also have something called a refer ineligible, and that's impossible. You really wanna get an approve eligible. But if you end up getting a refer eligible, you could still do what's called a manual underwrite if you have certain parameters that are taken care of. First of all, your debt to income ratio needs to be in line. It can't have, you know, it can't exceed a certain level. Normally it's 43% on the back end, meaning that your all of your debt plus your house payment divided by your actual income can't exceed 43%. Right, so if you meet those, and I see it all the time where there's a lot of people who had whatever happened in their life a couple of years ago and their credit isn't necessarily highest and it's somewhere between a 580 and 620, um, you can do what's called a manual underwrite. But the very first thing that always I ask, the very first thing I always ask, how do you pay your rent? Because the one factor across the board with every lender that they're gonna look at for the manual underwrite is have you had any late payments? Have you had any late payments in the last 12 months? So how are they going to check that? They're gonna check that a couple different ways. One, if you pay a property management company, they're gonna ask for a verification of rent. That's the easiest way to do it. So if you're paying uh, a property management company, easy. Okay, as long as you made your payments on time. So as long as you made your payments on time, we'll do a verification rent. They say past 12 months you've made your payments on time. That covers the hardest part about a manual underwrite. Beyond that, they're just gonna take a closer look and see what's going on. You might have to explain uh, some of the, the issues that impact your, your credit, but most of the time we can't explain that because life happens. What I would say at least, at least 95% of the people out there who pay rent, they pay in cash. And you know what that means? we cannot source it or it's very 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 difficult so this is my line of question how do you pay your rent and they say well i pay it to a property management company okay we talked about that how do you pay your rent do you pay a property management company or an individual i pay an individual okay how do you physically pay your rent do you write a check for it or do you pay it in cash and the vast majority of people pay it in cash and remember cash is the devil Okay, so let's say for example, rent is $700, okay? Or let's, let's, let's say it's $750, right? Because it, it makes the example sound, uh, uh, so you can see how this works. So rent is $750. So what I would need to be able to do if somebody paid cash is get 12 months of bank statements and show every single month $750 exactly coming out of the bank account that we can then say this is them paying their rent. But that's not what happens. People take out cash to pay the rent, but they don't want to do more than one withdrawal, so they're gonna take out, say, $900. And they're gonna use $150 for groceries or whatever, and then they're gonna hand off the $750 to their, uh, to their landlord. So what just happened? We cannot source the $750 and, and show that it's paid, because instead of saying 750, it's saying 900. And you might be thinking, well, I, it's more than the 750, but it's not the same number for the rent. In order to count it, they have to be able to say 750, 750, 12 times, okay? The best way for you to pay your rent is to write a check, okay? Write a check, because then we can show 12 canceled checks and show that they're paid on time. 
That's the best way to do it. So when you're paying your rent, pay it with a check. Some people don't have a checking account. Okay. If you have to write a cashier's check, you need to only pull out the money for the cashier's check. It's the same as cash, right? So you're going to pull out, set, write it for 750 bucks. Now there's normally, you know, like 250 or five bucks for uh, writing a cashier's check, but you can show that, right? So it's 750, so it would show like $752.50, right? You can show that because of the money order. And then when you get that money order or that cashier's check, make a copy of it, then give it to your landlord. That way you can show for 12 consistent months, hey, here's the money, this is how much it was, and it matches. We can source it that way, okay? So what's happening with these tightening guidelines that I talked about at the very beginning is used to be if you're above a 620, you know, you're probably going to get an approved eligible on an FHA loan. Now I've seen 660s not getting approved. You know, a lot of them will, but 640 and below is becoming very iffy. We don't know how tight these guidelines are going to get on July 20th of 2019, but when it hits, we're supposed to see a lot more refer eligible findings. And when that happens, the only option we're going to have is a manual underwrite. And then we're going to ask that question, how did you pay your rent for the last 12 months? And when you say, hey, I paid in cash, we can no longer do a manual underwrite. So you cannot buy a home. So that's why it's so important when I tell you don't pay cash for your rent. You need to think about the future and I need to be able to source my rent so that somewhere down the road, if I want to buy a house, I can prove that I had 12 on-time payments. All right. So critical, critical, because without it, we can't get around it. You cannot get around it. You're done. All right. So make sure that we can source it. Make sure you do it right. Make sure that you pay it on time and pay all your other bills on time so that hopefully your credit score rises and you don't have to worry about this. Okay, so we'll see how things go on the 20th, but that's a really good tip for you. So even if you can't buy now, then you know, okay, hey, I'm being strategic. A year from now, um, I'm going to be able to buy a home because I've got all my ducks in a row. Life happened to me, my credit's off a little bit, but now I know how I can buy a home if I document my rent payments properly. Pay them on time. Oh, and also, don't double up your payments. Don't pay ahead. You need to be able to show each month the singular payment i see it all the time where they'll pay it on you know the, the first and then they'll pay it on the 30th okay yeah we can make the argument but then what happens is that you have this accordion effect and it comes down to underwriting discretion if they're going to take it or not so make sure that you have a transaction in every single month okay that way there's no doubt that i paid january's rent in january july's rent in july okay so again you're prepping for the future all right, I hope this helps. If you like what you heard, please hit the bell, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Remember, it's all for one and one for all.